All right, I hope you did okay with that practice and the Khan Academy video to give you a basis of uh, equivalent expressions. And so now we're going to take it to the next step um, with substitution. So we've already talked about substitution when we evaluated expressions, but instead of them always telling us, we're going to get a little more choice here. But to start with, just to kind of lay the groundwork for um, what we're going to do here, it says solve the expressions where x equals 4, and then we want to know, are the expressions equivalent? So I want you to substitute that 4 in for x here, solve for this one, uh, this expression. And then do the same thing over here, so substitute 4 in for x, solve for this expression, see if you get the same answer. Go ahead and try that on your own first, since I know you've done this already. Um, and then you can unpause the video and listen to my explanation. So pause it, and go ahead and try it yourself first, and then you can listen to me. All right, I hope you took time to pause the video and try this on your own. Um, so real fast, I'm just going to show you. I substituted in, started with parentheses, multiplied first, ended up with uh, 12 because I did the 3 times 4, added them together to get 17, and then 2 times 17 gave me 34. Substituted over here and had 6 times 4 first to get 24, plus 10 to get 34. So I end up with the same answer, so they are equivalent. I hope you got the same thing. If not, please pause and go back and take another look. But if you did, let's move on. Now my question is, we said that x equals 4 that was given to us, but I want to know, does it matter what value we use for x? Do you think that these expressions would still be equivalent no matter what we use for x? Just take a moment to think about that. Maybe even try it with a different number. Well, I'll go ahead and help you out, even if you weren't sure. So hopefully you were thinking, yeah, it, they would still be equivalent no matter what value we use for x because of the property we know, right? If I use the distributive property here, 2 times 3x is going to give me 6x, and 2 times 5 is going to give me 10, and the addition stays the same. So that property tells us it's going to be equivalent. And so we're just proving that correct by using the substitution. So that's what we're going to be using as we move along. So when two expressions are equivalent, they have the same value no matter what number you substitute. Now, even though we can substitute any number we want, positive, negative, decimal, whatever, we are going to get to choose this time. And when you choose, I'm going to suggest that you choose values that are three or greater for your variables only because, not that it doesn't work with any number, I say that because Sometimes with 0, 1, or 2, or even negative numbers, either, or with decimals, right? Like, why would you pick a number that's hard to use? A decimal, or a negative, or a fraction? Those numbers are difficult to use, so why would you choose those? That, that makes no sense. So we're going to stick with whole numbers, even though we could choose a decimal if we wanted to, or a fraction, um, or even a negative number. But we're also going to choose values greater, uh, 3 or greater, because if you use 0, 1, or 2, sometimes two expressions can seem equivalent when they really aren't just because the 0, 1, and 2 tend to be a little bit um, trickier. For example, like with multiplication, if you multiply by 0, everything's going to end up being 0. That doesn't necessarily mean the expressions are equivalent. And same with like adding or multiplying by 2 or 1 or something like that. It doesn't always mean that it's going to be equivalent. So just to make it a little bit clearer for us, we're going to choose numbers that are 3 or greater just because then we won't run into that trouble. It's not to say we can't choose 1, 2, or 0, or whatever. Um, I just am going to suggest that you try and use 3 or greater just so that you don't run into um, maybe they seem equivalent when they really aren't. Um, because all it needs is to be proven one time to not work, and then the equivalent or the expressions are not equivalent. So really, we should be testing these more than once. But um, we're going to just start with picking one number. But um, if you have a time where you substitute with a number and it doesn't work, that means they're not equivalent, even if it worked for another number. That's why we want to make sure we're using numbers three or greater, just to try and avoid those times where they seem equivalent when maybe they're not. All right, enough of me chatting about that. Let's get into our examples. So it says, use substitution to determine if the expressions are equivalent or not. And again, they're not telling us what x is. We get to choose this time. So like I said, my golden rule is to keep the numbers low because it's easier to work with, but also numbers that are going to um, truly prove whether they're equivalent or not. So I'm going to just start with 3. 
We only have um, X, so we only need one number. Now, if you want to try a different number and see if you also come up with them being equivalent or not, that's a challenge you can choose on your own that's completely up to you. But if you're not sure how to do this and you want to just stick with my number, feel free to do that too, okay? Um, but regardless of the number, you should get the same um, answer as me, meaning is it equivalent or not. Your value is going to be different than me, but if this if the answer to this expression and this expression are the same, that's what will um, happen if they're equivalent or they'll be different if they're not equivalent. No matter what number you use, that will occur. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in here. So I'm going to first substitute here. So I just substitute my 3 because I chose that for x and substitute that in for x. I'm going to do parentheses first. 4 times, or I'm sorry, 5 times 4 gives me 20. All right, let's do the exact same thing over here. We're going to substitute here and solve and see if we get 20. If we do, they're equivalent. If we don't, then they're not. So I substitute in. I'm going to do this 5 times 3 first to get 15. 15 plus 5 gives me 20. I got the same value when I substituted the same number in for x, so that means these are equivalent. Again, if you want to try a different number like 4 or 5 or 10 or whatever you want, you can try that, and again, Whatever your answer is should be the same for you. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same for me because we chose different numbers. Um, but your answer should be the same with this expression compared to this expression if they're equivalent. If they're not the same, then they are not equivalent. Let's try another one. All right, we got some different expressions here. We have two variables, and remember, they are different variables, a and b, so that means we have to have different numbers for them. So again, I just keep it simple, and I pick a is 3, b is 4. But if you want to try different numbers, feel free. Now again, A has to be a, a different number than B. Uh, you can't have the same number. That, that's why they're different letters. All right, so let's try this first one. So I'm going to substitute in 3 times 3 minus 2 times 4. I'm going to do the multiplication. I can do it at the same time because it's not going to impact each other. So 9 minus 8 to get 1. Okay, let's try it over here. So I'm going to get... I'm substituting a or uh, 3 in for a every single time, so 3 plus 3 plus 3 minus, and then do the same thing with 4, but for b, so 4 plus 4. I'm just going to do all the additions together and just keep the subtraction kind of separate. And so I'm going to do 9 minus 8, right, because we want to combine the a's together, so that's kind of what we're doing here is combining these 3's together. And same thing with b's, combining the b's together, and then, um, and then worrying about this subtraction. So 9 minus 8 to get 1. So these again are equivalent. I got the same answer when I sub substituted. Again, if you want to try different numbers, that's up to you. One more. All right, so I've got an x and a y. Okay, and so I'm going to again, I'm just going to pick 3 and 4. Keep it simple, right? But if you want to try something different, go ahead. Just make sure x and y, the numbers are different because they're different variables. So over here, I get, oh, where'd it go? There we go. 3 times 3 plus 4 to the third, or 4 cubed. I'm going to do the exponent first, so I get 64, because it's 4 times 4, which is 16, and then 16 times 4. If you need to do that work off to the side, feel free. I'm going to do the multiplication next, so 9 plus 64 to get 73. So now let's see if we get the same thing over here. All right, so I'm going to substitute 4 in for y, so I'm going to do 4 plus 4 plus 4. And then plus, and then I've got my x times x times x, which is 3, so I'm doing 3 times 3 times 3. Now real quick, I just want you to pause here for a moment and think about what you know about multiplying a number repeatedly versus adding a number repeatedly. So this is 3 fours, not 4 times itself 3 times. So I can already kind of tell that this is probably not going to be the same, because this is 4 to the third, whereas this is 4 plus 4 plus 4. Same thing over here. This is 3 times 3 versus I have 3 times 3 times 3. So I'm thinking they're probably not going to be the same, but let's see just to be sure. So I'm going to do the multiplication first. I'm going to get 3 times 3 times 3 to get 27. And I'm just going to add them up, but I'm going to start by adding the 4s just so I want you to see what happens. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 gets me 12. So now 12 plus 27 gets me 39. So these are not equivalent because I got different answers, right? And you can kind of tell, right, because there's three y's being added versus multiplied over here with the power. And this is three x's, so this is like x plus x plus x. But over here I have x times x times x. So this would really be three y plus x to the third versus the three x plus y to the third. So these are not equivalent. Okay, so you have a quick check to go get real quick um, to test your knowledge on this. Then once you get that signed off, you can move on to the next practice, and you're almost through level two. You've got this.